We got a beekeeper coming, right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Yeah, no, I feel pretty good. I, I knew it wasn't going to be easy with Casper. It never is. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I was really looking forward to that match. Congrats. Great, great match. You went to the net, like you said, five times in the final game to close it out. But my question is a little more big picture. Does it, your success now, does it, does it feel a little bit sweeter given the stuff you've gone through, the stuff we learned about you through the Netflix, the the late night calls to your mom, maybe partying a little too much younger, being a, a bit of a late bloomer, like the fact that you've locked it down and become the player you are now, does it make the success even sweeter? Um, maybe. I mean, I don't know what it would feel like if I, you know, broke onto the scene right away. So I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it feels, I mean, it feels good. I mean, obviously I have <clears throat> another match on Saturday that I want to win, so... Uh, I'm not. I'm not satisfied um, yet. So obviously, I want to uh, end weeks with a win. You know, I want to. I want to win tournaments. That's that's always the goal. Is it sweet to be able to chip in and become the American who did make the semifinals, keep that little streak alive? So now it's four years consecutive that we've had an American man yeah. in the semis. No, no that's, that's awesome. awesome. I'm I'm pumped about that. Um, I didn't know. I, I mean, I kind of knew, but I didn't know that, uh, you know, I had to win today to keep that uh, that streak alive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's awesome. I'm pumped for the U.S. fans that we have produced some pretty good results here. Um, and like I said, I want to keep, keep winning and uh, keep going. Where would you rate the way you're playing Compared to what you've done at the Australian Open in the past, the fact that you've been in semis of a 1,000 previously. So considering those, where do you feel you are with your game? At, at what level are you playing at? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that I've played really well at different times in, my, in the past couple of years. Um, it's different, I think. I, I think I'm playing... A different style of tennis I think probably then I was playing or in Australia or in Toronto I was probably playing a little bit better from the baseline to be honest um, but I think I'm serving better right now I think I'm seeing the court a little bit better maybe attacking and using the whole court better so uh, I, I don't know it's, it's, it's different but I think I'm playing smarter better tennis um. You mentioned Australia. Australia had a weird ending for you this year. I imagine that was kind of painful. Um, I'm curious, sort of, what in retrospect you feel like happened at the end of that match, and but also like how you moved beyond it pretty quickly. I mean, your next tournament you won, and then the next one, right, you went to the final. Yeah. And that's a pretty, it's a pretty good bounce pack from yeah. what looked like a pretty painful ending so I'm sort of yeah. curious yeah so well, I'm sometimes curious. you know sometimes like the the painful endings are like exactly what you need you know I mean I obviously after that match it it hurt really bad and uh I was pissed and I flew back to the states I stopped in LA for a couple of days and I was like pretty much right back to work I was practicing I was hitting up people in LA to practice like the day after that match and people were kind of like why are you back on the court already but I was like super motivated to get back to work after that match I um I thought I had a pretty good December uh of practice and 
I mean, obviously, it didn't really translate. I, I thought that match with uh, Kikmanovic was a very high-level match, um, and I kind of just broke down there in the fifth set or, yeah, in the fifth. And to lose 6-0 in the fifth, like, it, it sucks, especially with, I mean, having match points in that fourth set. But like I said, I mean, sometimes it's it's the best thing that could happen. I mean, I, I came back and was really motivated to get back to work. I mean, knew that this this stretch of tournaments is really important. So, I mean, that that's kind of what motivated me. In the past, when you've had tough losses like that, have you bounced back that quickly, or did it surprise you at all that you were feeling like, yeah, that this was the, the reaction that you had? Um, I'm not sure. I, I think sometimes you can have for me, I think I've had some some tough losses where it's made me get back to work. Um, even just last week or two weeks ago in Acapulco, I lost first round there um, after a pretty good stretch of tournaments, like you said, with uh, Dallas and Del Rey. And then, I mean, I called my team to come to California immediately and like got back to work and um, was excited to get back to work before this tournament and knowing that this and Miami are very important tournaments for me. Tell me, I presume you know about the delay that's going on. Yeah. Uh, in all your travels at big tournaments, small tournaments, can you think of a, either a bizarre delay or an encounter with animals or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think in Miami there was like, I don't know if there was a delay, but there was the, the iguanas that came on the court. Um, I don't think anyone left the court for that reason. But uh, yeah, this is it's pretty wild. I was in the locker room right after finishing my cool down and I'm hearing them talk about bringing a beekeeper to the site. I just never, never heard of that. So it's <laughs> definitely crazy. I'm not, I'm not sure what uh, the update is, the most recent update, but that's a pretty wild one. Do you have a beekeeper who travels with your team? Or <laughs> No, definitely not. But maybe, uh, maybe this tournament needs to keep one, keep one uh, for next year. Tommy last question. You, you said you, you talking about routine. You said you used to not be a routine guy, but now you are. Mm -hmm. you talk about that process a little bit when you made the realization that you needed to be or should be, and how it's helped you. I mean, I think it's been little by little, um, and I mean they're not always like the normal routines. I mean, you, you see. Uh, I mean, a lot of players with very set in stone routines on, on court. And it's not always that. I mean, a lot of times it's like just off court. I mean, what what I'm having for breakfast, I mean, I kind of haven't switched it up too much. And I mean, I've been, you know, eating dinner, going straight to the hot tub every night, chilling, and then going to bed. That's like been my routine. Um, but it's, I mean, so far it's been nice. Why do you think it's good or why do you think it's helping you? Um, I don't know. I mean, just like for me, I've been watching tennis, eating dinner. You know, I'm I've after the tennis is done, you get a second to let your mind kind of relax for a bit and not think about tennis, and then go to bed and wake up and get back to it. I mean, I think that's helpful for me. Hey Tommy, is there a lot of do you watch a lot of tennis in general? And if you do, what kind of tennis do you like to watch, or is it just whatever's on? Yeah, I, I watch, watch a lot of tennis, uh, especially when I'm in the tournament. I mean, I've watched pretty much all the matches here um, this week, along with some some classic tennis matches. I've been watching, uh, I think the first, before my first round, we watched Tim Hemman versus Roger in Paris-Bercy. And then we watched uh, Edberg before my second round. Then we watched Boris Becker yesterday um you know a little inspo try and get to the net i mean those are all pretty good volleyers thanks guys for watching thanks what was your day, the routine what was, okay. yeah. what was for dinner last night and are you gonna stick are you gonna stick with the same thing no i mean it's just kind of like uh italian before i play it's not like the same exact meal but it's it's you know kind of Stick to the Italian, lots of carbs, kind of kind of deal. Okay. If you could watch any one player of all time, the final match, 
Who, what player would you pick out to, to watch? I've really enjoyed watching Edberg. Um, you know, just for whatever reason, I, I love his backhand volley, favorite shot in tennis. Thank you very much.